Some may fear the demons which have invaded Sanctuary, but not this champion. Demons fear him. So today we're going to take a look at the Fire Claw Druid. Now a lot of times in the past people would go with the Wear Bear due to the way increased attack speed used to work, but since some of the changes kind of more recently here in Diablo 2 Resurrected, I decided to go with what a lot of people tend to choose nowadays, and that is the Werewolf. The Wear Bear still works, still works very good, but a lot of people do choose the Werewolf over the Wear Bear nowadays. Now the video is going to go in this order. We're going to take a look at the character page, aka the stats page, then we're going to take a look at the skill tree, and then we'll take a look at what everybody's favorite is the actual gear on the build. Now for stat allocation, it's kind of normal to a lot of builds here in Diablo 2 Resurrected. It looks just ever so slightly different. I'll explain why you do just enough strength to wear your gear. And it does bump it ever so slightly higher due to extra strength you get once you get to those gear pieces. Now on the dexterity, we're up to 136 here. Now you need to dex a little bit higher than you do on a lot of other characters in Diablo 2 Resurrected. But when you do melee characters, a lot of times, you go with a phase blade as a weapon because it's really fast attack speed. So that's why we had to get our dexterity up to the at least uh, 136, I believe, is the minimum requirement there for a phase blade. We dump all the rest into vitality, so it's a max fight to build. We don't dump anything extra into energy. Our resistances are not completely capped, but that's because I have all stuff for damage and magic find across the entire build, really. And there are just a couple of spots where I do want to make up some of the resistance. That's how we get fire and lightning up to the you know low to mid 50s here. That's pretty dang good. They're not quite capped out. You could definitely make this up down in charms or a few other gear piece swaps. Cold, not going to be super important for a lot of the places that I go ahead and use this poison. I mean, I would like it to be higher, I suppose. Once again, not going to be that crucial. And while we're here, we'll take a look at the advanced stat page. The kind of important ones here on our main hand, our attacking hand, we have 281 magic find, a very solid number right there. Uh, 75 walk run because you can't teleport in werewolf and werebear form. So that's actually kind of important. The FCR here is 40, but we do have a uh, teleport on this particular character. So you teleport on the other side. And we go ahead and get our FCR up to 75. Now, Druid FCR frames for the teleport, which is kind of the only thing that's super important on this build, I suppose. It is 68 and 99. So we got just a little bit over that 68. So that's not a bad spot. Now, of course, there's going to be variation in the skill tree. So feel free to do what you like. But for me personally, I like getting at least the one point down to summon Grizzly. Then some of the other plus skills will go ahead and bump it up a little bit higher here. It survives most of the time with that 2600 life you do have battle orders to go ahead and help it out with spoiler alert on the gear call to arms also i go ahead and i rock heart of the wolf ring just to give us a little bit more damage if you're somebody that feels they need to you could always just go with oak sage right here but you actually have plenty of life on this build i feel so you know go ahead and do that if you wanted to you could use some of the other summons along with it as well it's gonna be up to you generally i just bring up the bear and we'll just call it a day with that now taking a look at the elemental skill tree there's more points over here than you would generally think so I get one point down to Cyclone Armor. You kind of got to keep spamming this all the time because it gets chopped down. You move on to the next pack, you make sure you put it up again. But I do go ahead and utilize Cyclone Armor. Also, uh, you can see up here we have 20 base points into Firestorm and into Molten Boulders. They're actually synergy for what we're going to talk about on the shape shift Shifting Skill Tree, and that is Fire Claw. So we go to max those out to get as much damage out of that. We actually use Armageddon, though, all the time. We try to have this up as much as possible. Now, this does have a synergy from Fissure, two seconds per one hard point into that so i have some points into fissure and as this build progresses if i get any more plus skills i'm gonna be putting more into fissure those extra two seconds if you don't have them here on armageddon it only lasts like 12 seconds i believe it was so with the extra synergy points now we at least get it up to 34 so it's not like you're casting it literally before every pack but like before you take them out so i feel like that is actually kind of important uh fissure or firestorm and molten boulder are synergies for this right here too firestorm and molten boulder which we already talked about jumping over the shape-shifting skill tree now we've got uh one base point into up here werewolf lycanthropy werebear we got feral rage we've got maul to come down to fireclaw and we go ahead and put 20 hard points and you can see down there what i said 
Firestorm and Molten Boulder are synergies for this. They're also synergies, conveniently enough, for, like I said a, a minute ago, Armageddon. So that works out. There are uh, synergies that help out both those skills. So we're getting a ton of damage out of Fireclaw, 12,000 to 13,000 right there. Now we're rocking a ton of damage here on Fireclaw. If you wanted to, you could come down to Fury and get that as well. Sometimes people use Fury if they have a bunch of different pre-buff gear. There's certain things you can do to have pre-buff gear on that are on hit, so you want to attack super fast, so they'll use, they'll get one, one down to Fury, so they swing, swing, swing as fast as they can and proc this stuff faster. That's another option, kind of up to you if you end up going that route. Now everyone's favorite part is the gear. Now this is what I went with. I'll try to go over options at some of the spots, but I can't go over literally everything because there's a billion different options you can have in a ton of places. So feel free to experiment around if you would like to. Now, for a lot of melee characters, even though this does do a lot of fire damage as well, you also want to do some physical damage when you're attacking. So we went ahead and went with the grief right here. You got in the face blade to get more increased attack speed. So that way we're actually attacking just incredibly fast because the more strikes you get off, you're going to be applying more of the fire damage from fire claw anyway. So grief, great option. You could go with two handed options here whether you want to go with something like obedience for a budget option, or there's just a ton of different options, breath of dying you could throw on something like this. But I decided to go with the just easy peasy, just kind of standard for a lot of uh, any melee characters. We're going with the grief right here. Now, I actually went with the Phoenix shield over here. We got minus enemy fire res, which can help out the fire damage. We have redemption aura. That's actually a big way of keeping us alive. Uh, so this right over here, super expensive. It does have the fire absorb as well. Can understand if you didn't want to go this way and obviously if you went two-handed weapons you wouldn't have this over here but if you're going one-handed you could throw over here phoenix as i did now up on the top here we're going with the harlequin's crest this is a magic find variant and i'm a magic finder at heart so i went with this of course budget wise you can go with jalal's you could go with uh metamorphosis up here throw on something along the lines of a raven lore that has minus enemy fire res and some skill stuff on it too that can really help you out so there's a few different options up there on the helmet. Down on the armor here, we've got Enigma. Great option. I always teleport out to the places that I'm going. So this is crucial, but also it does have 45% faster run walk on it. So that's going to be important since you can't teleport while you're in werewolf or werebear form. So getting to running around like that, we got a bunch more strength to kind of save points there. All the magic find on there. Uh, absolutely amazing armor right here. Something over here, you could go with a treachery, get more increased attack speed if you need it. You could go ahead and get something like a hustle here as well now over on the gloves here i decided i want to get to at least a reasonable break point for teleporting out so we've got mage fist it does also have one to fire skills so actually boosting up the damage ever so slightly there trang's gloves could give you the fcr to get to that break point as well another option if you don't need the fcr you could always go with the absolute classic on melee characters the laying of hands for increased attack speed to get some fire res in that way as well damage to demons Absolute classics on melee characters. We'll jump to the belt here, and, and along the lines of getting to that FCR breakpoint that I wanted to for teleporting out, we went with Aractus Mesh. You do, of course, get one to all skills as well. A little increased mana, but absolutely classic melee options down here as well. Verdango's Hardy Cord, String of Ears. Those are probably the most classic options. Now, over on the boots, I have some pretty dang good over here. Almost tri-res. Not technically legally tri-res, because people are going to lose their minds if I call it a tri-res boot when it has poison res on it. But... It has some more walk run. We've got those resistances right there and a little bit of magic find because, yeah, I love magic find. Now, this is one spot where I decided, hey, we got to at least get to a reasonable, reasonable resistance spot. So actually, I got a 30 res Maras up here. The two to skills is obviously going to help you out as well, along with the all attributes. Of course, once again, a classic for melee characters. You go ahead and throw on the High Lord's Wrath skill attack speed. Uh, what's it got? Deadly Strike on it, the Lightning Res. So absolutely great option up there is for High Lords as well. Now down on the rings, like any of the melee characters, you got to have Cannot Be Frozen somewhere. So we went with the Raven Frost over here. And on the other ring, really, I just kind of wanted the resistances to be perfectly honest. So this is kind of what that is. You could go with a ton of other options. SOJ, BK ring for the plus skill. That can give you a little bit more damage over there or whatever the best rare ring you have as you see what I got right now. Now over on swap, of course, we've got call to arms. You got to go ahead and boost your life up and stuff like that. And we're already using a spirit in the Phoenix shield on the one side. So we have the spirit monarch over here as well. This is also the hand that I go ahead and teleport on as well. This is how we get over the 68 break point to go ahead and teleport at a, what I believe is a reasonable speed. Editor Phil here. Now, I just wanted to mention the Hustle Rune Word in a weapon. You can go ahead and land a blow with this first, get that burst of speed proc, and it allows you to run around faster and to attack faster later on. 
Then you got to go ahead and swap back around to Call to Arms, Battle Order Up, swap over to Grief. That's way too much gear swapping for me, but if you would like to go this route, it is an option. Now, down in the inventory, we've got seven MF charms, and we've got the shape-shifting skillers right here. Uh, those extra skills are bumping up the damage on Fireclaw, and if you can get your hands on them, we got Geeds. We got ourselves a Torch and Annie down here as well. Of course, if you got to use them. Next up, taking a look at the Mercenary, and we go with the Might Mercenary since we are a melee character. We are doing mostly fire damage, but also you can do physical damage as well. We over here have Infinity since we are doing that fire damage from Fireclaw. All around great weapon up here in Darl's Visage with a Rail to get rid of the minus uh, fire res. And right here we have a Fortitude. You could always go with an absolute classic if you're going with the budget version. You can go Insight, Tal's Mask, and Treachery, or a lot of different options of what you can have on the Act 2 Mercenary. You could, if you really wanted to as well, go with that Act 5 Mercenary, maybe with dual plagues or a ton of different options to go on that. Already, let's take a good look at some places where this thing can absolutely wreck. Now, the very first place we're gonna test this out is one that has no fire immunes, and that's down here in the Stony Tombs. Now, you gotta bring up a lot of stuff here. We got our bear, we got our cyclone armor, we got our um, Armageddon, and we have our Heart of the Wolverine, and then you have to go ahead and battle order everything up. It's kind of a lot of stuff to pre-buff, and really, there's even other pre-buff options, but I mean, I gotta bring a limit to it at some point. So, now that we've got that stuff up, go ahead and bring yourself into werewolf form, and then you go ahead and start slapping. Now, we actually have one point into Feral Rage, and we use that to go ahead and get right here. You see, uh, run walk speed right there, and a bunch of lifesteal. So, that's really important to go ahead and get that. So, we're gonna go ahead and slap, slap, slap. You see the little red around us, and this is player 7 difficulty. Now, we're, gonna, we're good to go ahead and start swinging. So, swing, swing. You see the regular skeletons were actually taken out in one shot. That guy got taken out in a little uh, more than one shot. It was like two along with the Armageddon, and that room's clear. So you can see the Armageddon actually already wore off. So we're going to go ahead and bring that back up. That's kind of how fast it goes away, unfortunately. So it is what it is. Armageddon does not last long. It's just part of what the skill is. So you can see it's not necessarily um, the AoE clear that a, you know, Nova Sorceress is. It's not a mosaic assassin just flying around at a million miles an hour, but it is absolutely powerful. You can see the survivability. I got almost 4K life over there, and even though my resistances aren't capped, you see it ticking down ever so slightly. Just comes right back up because we have Redemption Aura on our Phoenix Shield. So that really brings us back a ton of life and a ton of mana. So as long as you're uh, constantly like killing monsters and things along that line, you're gonna be A-OK. -okay. And uh, I did mention it, but just in case you did miss that, this is player seven difficulty. So even player seven, players eight, you're not going to have really any problem. I didn't even feel it necessary. I'm one-shotting these regular monsters, so you probably don't need to test this out on players one with this gear setup. Well, I think we can see this works pretty dang good. Let's try it out in a, new, a few other areas where it really does slap stuff down. Okay, as I say that, good old Gladbane. Love to see it for the video, fellas. So we're not going to test it out in every place in the entire game, but hey, we'll come out to Eldritch right here easy enough. So once you go ahead and get the Feral Rage slapped up, and you see, at these regular monsters, they take in, I don't know, what is it, maybe two every once in a while, three hits, I suppose, whether the Armageddon had actually touched them before or not. And right there, there was actually one of these monsters, uh, you can't really see it, but I don't have a Sunder Charm on this particular guy, so if you do come across the Fire Immunes, um, you can go ahead and take them out with the physical damage, but it is quite a bit slower. And hey, while we're at it, why don't we go ahead and come after a good old Shank down here as well. Usually it takes a little bit longer, but no big deal. One, two, three, down he goes, no problem. So yeah, it really does work pretty good. These are pretty easy areas though. Another pretty easy area you can go ahead and use this for coming out to Pendle, of course. Pendle, of course. So you get hit pretty hard, but yeah, just a couple of hits on each one of the monsters. Go ahead and take him out. There's Pendle, bang, 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 and he's gone. Now we're still player seven difficulty, but you can see right here, actually going to a place that has quite a few fire immunes out here at the Hell Chaos Sanctuary. I'm gonna show you how it works with a Sunder Charm going against them with the different minuses of resistance forms that you have on this build. But you can see with the Sunder Charm, with this particular build, unless you do something a little differently, we got minus 23 to fire res. Now we gotta go ahead and get all of our stuff ready and rocking here, battle orders, there we go. Swap over, get our Feral Rage rocking, and man, I could not imagine having more stuff to pre-buff than even like these seven different things right here. And there are some uh, builds that I've seen or heard of that, that actually uses way more stuff than that to pre-buff. So you can see right here, we got to make sure our Armageddon's going. And now we break their immunities. We can go ahead and slap them down. And uh, yeah, you, you can see my life ooh, getting chopped down quite fast here. The thing is, is you don't leech from stuff that is undead, which is a lot of that stuff. A lot of that stuff. It can give you a problem. So there, I actually dropped to one health. You've seen I wasn't in werewolf form anymore. And there's actually a little uh, 
we'll call it a survivability hack, I suppose. When you drop to one life on on uh, when you're in werewolf or werebear form, you don't actually die. You actually just drop out of werewolf form to a human form with one health. So that was a close call. Wow. You can see how, wow, I dropped out of werewolf form again. So you can see how this can be a little bit of a problem here. This is players seven difficulty. Remember, they're hitting real hard and I have like no immunity. So you'd have to do a little bit more if you're going to try to farm. Well, we'll call places like players seven and eight chaos sanctuary solo but this is still a really fun build this is one that where you know you're going to take it out to certain locations and you take it to those locations and then you absolutely wreck but it's not going to be the best at literally every single place set up this way if you want to set it up with zero magic finds so you just don't find any uniques and stuff i guess you could go ahead and do that but that's just not the way i play so that's my fire claw drew let me know the things that you like to rock differently do you like having even more pre-buff gear to get a little more, more damage even though you're spending like 45 seconds pre-buffing before every run there's a lot of different ways you can do this build, so let me know your faves down in the comments. Don't forget, hit the like button and subscribe up before you go if you haven't done so already. Peace out, fellas, and keep slaying.